5.7 practice problems. Based on the proposed mechanism, which of the following best describes the concentration of the species so shown opposite as the reaction occurs? So the species so shown opposite, we have uh, the large white circle and the medium sized uh, dark circle. And uh, we can see that at the very first step, it does not exist, and at the very last step, it does not exist. It only exists as an intermediary between step one and two. And uh, as I produce the <clears throat> chlorine oxide and move to uh, step two here, uh, this uh, goes pretty uh, quickly once I once I have uh, my correct reactants I'm going to be moving fast since I can have uh, a fast reaction starting at step two so I'm gonna have a relatively low concentration of that uh, uh, chlorine oxide since it is an intermediary and uh, it is also required for this fast reaction which means it's going to be used pretty pretty quickly so I am going to say that uh, B the concentration is very low for the duration of the reaction is going to be my best um, representation of that. Based on the models, which of the following represents the species that acts as a catalyst for the reaction? So um, catalysts are going to be things that um, appear at the beginning and at the end. And uh, so basically they are not uh, changed throughout the entire reaction. And so I'm going to look back at um, my reactants and I'm going to see that uh, initially I have chlorine and ozone and then at the very end I have chlorine and oxygen here. Chlorine remains unchanged, so it would uh, be our catalyst. It's uh, unchanged throughout the reaction. Uh, based off of the proposed mechanism, what is the balanced chemical equation for the overall reaction? So um, we have um, ozone turning into oxygen. Uh, we ignore anything that is uh, going to remain unchanged from the beginning to the end. So that means that we are not going to be including any catalysts. We just determined that chlorine was a catalyst, so we are not going to include that. Instead, we are going to be going from ozone to oxygen as our uh, reaction here. So uh, these three options all include the catalyst of chlorine, um, so that is going to be eliminated very easily. And then we have uh, ozone to oxygen as our only remaining option, so that is going to be our best choice. Uh, a reaction mechanism for the destruction of ozone is represented above. In the overall reaction, uh, nitrogen monoxide is best described as, so we can see that nitrogen monoxide appears at the very beginning as a reactant and at the very end as a product, which means it made it through unchanged um, effectively. Uh, since we do not uh, create or destroy um, the nitrogen monoxide, it makes it through the reaction. It's not really um, a part of the reaction. Um, and so it is going to be a catalyst and a catalyst only. The proposed steps for a catalyzed reaction between selenium-4 and uh, thallium-1 are represented above. And the products of the overall catalyzed reaction are Okay, so um, the products for the overall reaction, um, I am going to uh, go ahead and combine everything uh, and see what uh, gets eliminated out. And so uh, I'm going to get rid of anything that appears on the left side and the right hand side. So this manganese um, is present in uh, all forms on both sides. The um, uh, selenium and thallium uh, 
do change within these. So those are the only ones that are going to stay. I am looking for my products specifically. So I am only looking at this side. So that means that I am going to be uh, choosing option choice B, because that is the only one that uh, has my products only um, and does not include uh, things that got eliminated. A proposed mechanism for the destruction of ozone gas in the stratosphere is represented above. Which of the following is evidence that the mechanism is occurring? So, um, something that uh, would show that this mechanism is occurring, something that would show that this is something that happens. Um, we are looking at chlorine being a uh, catalyst here, since it is in the uh, reactants portion of step one and then the products portion of step two, which means it is a catalyst. So uh, things that um, would show that uh, chlorine is a catalyst and this is um, a, a true option here is going to be that uh, the overall uh, chlorine concentration remains approximately consistent. Um, or sorry, uh, that um, uh, not that it remains consistent, but that um, because we have it going between these two here, we uh, are going to see a decrease and then an increase as we go along through the reaction. The overall net is consistent. Um, however, uh, over, like throughout the reaction, we are going to see a first a decrease and then an increase in chlorine uh, as uh, just a single chlorine gas. Um, okay, so uh, looking through these, the presence of chlorine increases the rate of the overall reaction. Okay, that would show that it is a, um, a catalyst and um, would speed things along. So that is a, a good um, indication that uh, chlorine is used somewhere in here and that this is a, uh, a possible mechanism. The presence of chlorine decreases the rate of the overall reaction. That would be um, a, a contraindicator, meaning that that doesn't seem to be doing a great job um, in forcing that reaction to go forward. The presence of chlorine increases the equilibrium constant for the overall reaction or decreases the equilibrium constant for the overall reaction. Um, Increasing or decreasing the equilibrium constant isn't going to uh, be a, a great indicator that this is used, that this is uh, definitely the thing that is happening. Instead, uh, seeing that the uh, chlorine is going to increase the rate of the reaction uh, does indicate that it is acting as a catalyst. And so that would be um, my best case scenario, my thing that is going to be um, my best evidence that that is a mechanism that is occurring.